All right. Hello, everybody. It's meteorologist Hutch Johnson joining you. A hump day update, but not only that, we're looking ahead at some storm potential as we head into the holiday weekend. Three days of storms, multiple rounds, and the severe risk looks legitimate to me. I'll have details in this version. Bring your questions and your input right here to Hutch's Weather. Thanks for watching. Let's get started right yeah. now. A Hutch's Weather Update with Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Brought to you by Robert Gibb and Sons. All right. Thanks to you for watching. And thanks to all of my fine sponsors on all of my platforms. And as we take a look at the radar, we have some thunder up to the north in Winnipeg, stretching out towards Brandon, Manitoba. So if you are up in these areas, we do have some lightning starting to uh, appear up there uh, north of the international border. Those storms are pretty stout there with a little bit of hail potential with them as they're rolling in uh, to the uh, west side and south side of the Winnipeg area. South of Brandon and east of Brandon, we have a couple of showers. One little pimple out here in Ramsey County as we take you in a little bit closer. It looks like it's approaching that uh, Nelson County area as well. No warnings on any of these, and our risk, even though we had a very hot and muggy weather today, is quite low for severe weather. I saw a heart fly by, so if you're watching on the old, uh, well, on my YouTube channel, I sure appreciate it. I'm going to put a thanks for watching in there uh, because it's wonderful to see that platform growing as well. So again, I invite your questions as we go through. So Brockett and Lawton and areas north of Lakota seeing these showers drip their way down. You can see the movement to the south and east as we've gone through the last couple of scans. And I'll go ahead and turn the radar data on here for the uh, cell motion with this storm. Again, not not severe, just heading in the general direction of that Highway 2 corridor as it works its way to the south and to the east uh, of the area. So here's a look at our local radar, a little bit closer view of the cell. Not seeing any thunder lightning for us, but out to the uh, uh, north there near Winnipeg, we do have some. Now the main event tonight happening down south, look at this along the South Dakota and Nebraska border, Rosebud all the way to winter. Some wind reports with these storms. I did. I said winter and I meant winter. Uh, as you take a look at the wind report here, this uh, local storm report of a 59 mile per hour gust from this puppy as it burped its way through the region. Highway 18 area, Rosebud, all the way out here. There is a long thunderstorm line, and the main threats from this line of storms, 60, 60 mile per hour gusts and 1.25 inch diameter hail. Another big aerial covered uh, uh, storm warning for one, two clusters of storms moving through northern and western parts of the state of Nebraska. And then look at what's going on east of Alliance. Some two inch diameter hail reports out there as the ice chunks are really flying another two inch report out there uh, from the Sheridan area, Sheridan County, Nebraska, one mile northeast of Antioch. So now that's a look at what's going on. Let's take a look at the national picture. Very wet and stormy weather along the eastern seaboard tonight from upstate New York all the way through Boston, Massachusetts. We have some showers and storms. West coast to look there. We do have a couple of showers and storms and some weather going on in Reno and some windy storms out there near Idaho Falls and no, south of Salt Lake City and the western slope of Colorado. Here near Mesa County, Colorado, we had a wind gust reported at 51 miles per hour. Hold on to your hats and put some rocks in your pockets. Temperatures today reached a high of Fargo of 87 degrees. Right now, we are still pretty warm out there as we cross into the 9 o'clock hour. And this is what we're seeing on the old thermometer across the region. 82 Fargo and Grand Forks. Look at Glendive, Montana, 88 degrees out there. Watertown, South Dakota, 75. And a little bit more of a northerly component. Think keeping things cool and chill in International Falls and out towards Rainy Lake at 66 degrees, 81 in the Twin Cities. And look at Fort Peck all around eastern Montana. We're seeing those temperatures soaring, as we like to say out here, at 90 degrees. Shirley, thanks for watching from Moorhead. Jane, good to have you on board. Somebody's asking, hey, Hutch, got friends here for the first time from Australia. How's the night looking? Oh, from down under, eh? That's a very bad Norwegian-ish accent and twist on the, the Australians. So my apologies as we take a look at the weather. Okay, let's take a look. What we can expect is hot. Let's get right to it for your friends there. And we'll look at the numbers first and then we'll time some of the weekend storms because Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 
we've hit the storm stretch and this will be the third weekend in a row where Hutch's hunch says we're going to have some severe weather. All right, for your Wednesday, just downright hot and isolated storm can't be ruled out in the heat and sweaty humidity. 90 degrees again on your Thursday as we see that hot weather continuing. It's red because my elbow is snapping and I think we're going to see severe. There's a risk of strong to severe storms out in the western Dakotas and the central Dakotas. And that includes you folks in eastern Montana as well. In fact, this is a look at that risk for severe weather as we go through the day on your uh on your thursday rather so let's get to that and as we take a peek at that thursday risk one thing you're going to notice with regards to that is it's all out to the east and this green means it's a level one on a five level scale i anticipate with the heat and humidity if storms form they could be pretty volatile on our thursday but as we take a peek uh, here, we're seeing that uh, eastern Montana, the oil patch in the central part of the Dakotas, the storms form, and then they'll likely move off to the east. I'll show you more on that. Also, we have a slight, excuse me, not a slight risk, what's called a, a um, level one risk out from Minneapolis through much of southern and central Wisconsin out there. Howdy, Bruce says from Vining. Good to have you on board. Going to be up mentor for the fourth. What are you thinking for that area? Well, I got to tell you. Um, as it looks very stormy for our entire region, Bruce, not everyone is going to see storms. It's not going to happen all the time, but we're going to have passing doozies. Let's just call it that as these are going to have some gas. I did not say passing gas. I said passing doozies with gas. They're going to be some stout storms. Now, the forecast out for the uh, day uh, four category here, we'll talk about here. Fourth of July could be wet in the lakes country. Not only that, Sue, uh, stormy as well. Let me go ahead and take a look at that storm forecast for you here as we were in the middle of the seven day when I alluded to the Thursday risk being out west. Those storms will move our way. Friday, look at that heat and humidity. Heat indices between 90 and 100 degrees in our area and some out, out to the far west could see even higher than that as a humidity builds and the chance of storms goes up. It's red in the afternoon because from the middle of the day, all the way through the night and into your Saturday morning, I expect rounds of strong storms and possibly severe storms. On Saturday, however, the better chance appears right now to be in Minnesota for the stronger storms. But look at the cool relief it brings for the weekend ahead with temperatures taking a break there. Michael Vaughn, hi, good to have you on board. Thank you so very much for the, I think that looks like a crown, but uh, I mean, I can't fit a crown on this. I'd mess up my hair. All right, now let's take a look at this. Good evening to you as well. Uh, thanks, Go for Hockeys. Uh, it's Simon. Good to have you on board. Okay, now, cooler weather through the weekend, quieter finally on Sunday, and then Monday and Tuesday, the heat starts building back up. We're going to take a look at two models in this, and I do want to ask questions. Sue, I've got an answer for you. Bruce, i got an answer for you. Kara, i got an answer for you. My daughter's been pen pals for six years and finally get to meet them in person. Wow, Kara, that is fantastic, and what a way to go there. That is absolutely spectacular. Watching from Park Rapids, Moorhead. Okay, i got an idea where everybody's watching from. And, of course, Australia. All right, let's go take a look at what's going on across the forecast area. We're going to start with the European model. And this model here is the one Hutch likes to go to uh, for days beyond day three or four. Okay, so let's get it to it. And I'm showing a national view here. And I do want to point out that that national view uh, uh, well allows us to see what's going on because I don't know where everybody's traveling for the fourth. Now, as we head into Thursday, storms form in the Dakotas here and move north along the international border. That's where the best chance of strong storms will be with the heat that will be here. They could be volatile, hail and gusty wind. And I cannot rule out the risk for an isolated spin up as well. So we'll keep you posted on that, particularly with those isolated cells. Here's Friday, and this is first thing in the morning, 7 a.m., not much going on except the heat. Thank you so much, BA. It's good to see you on there and throwing some stars Hutch's way. Big time building of new stuff for Hutch's weather, and exciting announcements are coming soon. But for now, let's stick to the weather as we head in on this European model forecast. Here we go for your Friday. Midday, this is one in the afternoon. The heat is on. We're soaring into the 90s and Shazam. Look at where they form. Eastern North Dakota, Eastern South Dakota, all the way up into Northwest Minnesota. And this is at 21Z. You subtract five hours from that and you're looking at about four to five in the afternoon. These storms will start festering up. Now, hot, and storms that fire up, I think, will have all modes of severe weather potential with this type of a weather pattern in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. 
based on that, as we go toward the fireworks time, now you're looking at about 10 o'clock at night, moving into the arrowhead of Minnesota, but we're not quite done yet. Look at another round building up after midnight here in the region and blasting through Minnesota. So the European model has shower and thunder shower chances as we go through the overnight hours. Now look at what goes on on Saturday. In the morning hours, they sweep out towards Duluth and the cities, kind of a rainy day there. This is a cool front that brings that cool relief out there. But if you happen to be out in the area of uh, Lake Superior, Saturday's round of storms look to be pretty stormy there. So the weekend could be a stormy one across the region, and then the rest of us enjoy quieter weather as we close the weekend out. Now, I said we'd compare models. Let's check out the old American model. And if you have a question, uh, drop it right here. Let me see what's going on on the Facebook channel. It does look like uh, Cindy says, weather has sure been busy. Believe me, B Bemidji is indeed morning. I can't believe the pictures that have come out of Bemidji with the snap trees. Uh, boo, well said. Boo, I'm tired of storms, BA. I, I absolutely agree. Hallock, you had a tornado warning up in Kitson County that's strewn into the area of uh, uh, Roseau County. And the photos I got from that were just quite impressive as well. So now let's take a look at what the American model says. We're going to jump right to the timeline here on Thursday, and you're going to see similar results here. Storms out west, eastern. Montana and moving off along the border. This model, the American model, carries them into Winnipeg and along the international border. So that's close enough for comfort for me and enough confidence that I have that most of our stormy activity in our area on Thursday will be up north. And yes, the risk of severe will be there. Friday, we get through the midday hour and in the afternoon and early evening, storms start to fire up here. Look at this in the eastern third of North Dakota and northwest Minnesota. Looks very familiar, eh? Yes, it does. Strong to severe storm potential all the way into the high plains of Colorado, western, western Kansas and Nebraska, South Dakota, and the Black Hills as well as western Montana. And then as we take a look at the advancement of those storms on Friday, check that out. Friday, as we go into the afternoon, here they go, right into northwest parts of Minnesota, northeast Minnesota, and then a break. And does it fester up more? It does, but not until noon on Saturday. So while the European model says storm wave after storm wave, a couple different ones happening on your uh, Friday night on the 4th of July into Saturday morning, this model says, eh, maybe not. And the threat on Saturday looks to move off to the east. Now there's a little weather wiggle making its way through. That weather wiggle's going to wobble, but it ain't going to make us fall down. That looks like a pretty uh, in. Uh, significant weather event there. Some areas will see some heavy rain. Please remember, it's not going to storm all day, every day. Questions, comments, and concerns? Will there be severe weather? Why do I think there'll be severe weather? For that, I'm going to take us back to a more close-up view of our area, and I'm going to uh, uh, question one of these models and show you what Thursday's looking like here as we go through. Pardon me, the new models are actually just coming in, which is a good thing because that gives us the opportunity to look and see uh, how they have changed. I'm looking for one that goes out just a wee bit farther here. Okay, as we take a look, let me go to this one. This one will go out quite a ways. This one gets us all the way out into Thursday evening here. Now, what we have going on here um, in the you know, larger scale weather pattern, not a, individual thunderstorms are pretty small, but we got a low pressure unit uh, and system setting up in Eastern Montana. And along that, a warm front kind of working its way through parts of North Dakota. Where that warm front sets up is where I think we'll have a chance of a few modes of severe weather, including an isolated tornado. So this model only goes out to Thursday morning. So unfortunately I can't go out just uh, too much farther than that, but let's take a look at this one here. This puppy is still coming in, but let me go back to the last model run. Okay, here we go. So as we head into Thursday on this one, here's your uh, low pressure center developing, working its way along the border as we go from Thursday into Friday, taking most of the energy into Winnipeg. And see this thing moving across? This is a warm front here. So if we do get storms forming along that, warm fronts do have a little bit more uh, opportunity for shear and spin in the atmosphere along and near the warm front. And anything that forms in that 90 degree air could be volatile if it forms, I'm not saying it will, but if it forms, pay attention to that. 
Now, as we head farther on into the forecast details, here's Friday with this particular model, another American model showing development along a line from northern Minnesota right into the Southern Valley and moving east. As we go into your Friday night about fireworks time, it's moving through Duluth, Bemidji, and down to the south. So I will keep you posted with regards to our severe weather threat as we go through. Thank you so very, very much for watching, and I hope everybody has a happy 4th. And as a note, I do want to pass along to you this. Hutch is going to be camping on the 4th of July. I am going to be out of town. Does that mean I will not cover weather? No. But what I want you to keep in mind all weekend long is that if the storms are firing, use hutchesweather.com to see the latest. If there's a warning in your area and you allow hutchesweather.com to track your location of your device, the warnings in the area you're in will be on there. You can also adjust the location. So if you happen to be uh, traveling somewhere where you're not used to traveling and you still want to see what's going on at home, you can do that too on hutchesweather.com. Right behind my head, I'm going to back off. There's a little gear up here. That gear is a settings and you can set your location uh, to the to the area you want to keep your eyes on. So as well, it looks like a fun, fun time. Michael, I will have fun camping and I'll tell you this. I am it, you know, I know the storms will be bad. I'll be keeping my eyes on them. If they get bad, I will be here and doing updates any way I can, even if it's just updating on my Facebook channel with posts from the cell phone. And I want your reports as well as you're out and about enjoying your day. Staying informed is the number one most important thing you can do to protect you and your family. If there's a warning issued, make sure you know where you can go to get be safe. Hutch will, in the example of camping, I look around for that sturdy structure because I'll be in a tent, old time camping. And with that, I know tents don't offer much protection from winds that can topple trees and branches and lightning and heavy rain and, well, you know, heaven forbid any tornadoes or anything like that. We don't want any of that. So we'll keep you up to date with the latest. It is that optimal time of year for our area to see strong storms. We don't always get them, but this weekend, I'm afraid we'll have a decent chance of that. Summarizing with your numbers in the forecast again for the next seven days, Thursday evening, west and northern parts of the valley. Western North Dakota to Northern Valley will have a chance at strong to severe storms. On uh, Friday, on the 4th of July, eastern North Dakota through all of Minnesota, a chance of strong to possibly severe storms. I'll keep you posted for now. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for joining me on this hump day. I'll try to get some work done here in the yard, and I hope you all get a, a, a chance to invoice enjoy some quiet as well have a wonderful evening check back regularly and oh pedro come here you want to say hi come on up here come on all right and pedro says happy fourth of july everybody pedro doesn't like all the loud fireworks his little heart starts beating and he gets very nervous so uh uh yeah we'll take care of pedro here right pedro yes we will and leo too wherever he is he's meowing around here somewhere Leonardo DiCatrio, the furry forecaster, Pedro, the prognosticating puppy, and Hutch Johnson signing off, thanking you for hitting the follow button on my Facebook page and thanking you for subscribing on my YouTube channel. Have a great night.